The one thing that took me to visit St. Winifred's Well in Holywell in Flintshire in Wales was the fact that it is probably the most ornate of all holy wells in either Britain or Ireland. The majority of holy wells in this part of the world tend to be basic bodies of water in a grassy or woodland setting. Sometimes there's a basic stone or finished surrounding denoting the well. Rarely a more aesthetically complete structure built around the holy well with a small bathing pool for people who wish to immerse themselves in the waters in order to find healing. It's common to see in Ireland to see rags and in England flowers attached to nearby hawthorn trees and this indicates that pilgrims still visit the place to this day. What makes the Holy Well at St. Winifred's Well stand out is the magnificent physical structure surrounding it. The entire well and its associated buildings at St. Winifred's is on an enormous and grand scale. The main spring at the heart of the structure is a pool of water about five feet deep. A pile of stones has been placed over the spring in order to stop it from rising up into a fountain. But having said that, the dampened upswell of water still looks rather impressive as it swirls to the top of the main pool. Built in the late 15th century is an impressive two-story stone building with an attached chapel built above the star-shaped well enclosure. And from this, the waters flow out into a large outdoor rectangular bathing pool built apparently in the 1700s. Although this is a place of Catholic pilgrimage, the entire location speaks of a pagan undertones and backstory, which is the reason I was brought to St. Winifred's Well. The present Christian folklore surrounding St. Winifred is that she was a saint who lived in North Wales in the 7th century and was alleged to have been raped by a Prince Caradog. During this assault, took out his sword and cut off her head when she continued to resist his advances. Winifred's uncle, a Saint Buenio, was at hand and restored her to life by placing her head back on her shoulders. If you look at the illustrations of Saint Winifred, you will see a thin line always shown around her neck to denote where she was decapitated. The well water itself is said to have rushed up to flow where her head fell upon the ground and the red marks visible on the surrounding stones is where it said the saint's blood splashed upon the wall. There is a stone in the bathing pool that is said Saint Bueno sat upon when instructing Winifred in Christian doctrine. These days pilgrims who follow the traditional ritual while bathing in the well finish off by kneeling upon this stone. The town's name itself, Hollywell, denotes the importance of St. Winifred's Well, and to this day its popularity continues, while other holy wells around Britain and Ireland have fallen into decline. The location has been a place of pilgrimage since at least 1120, and has been visited by Henry V, Edward IV, and Henry VII, and to this day many pilgrims from all over the UK and Ireland continue to visit the well. It is probably the most popular and active holy well in Britain, with many thousands of visitors annually making the pilgrimage to the location. According to both the well's records and also denoted by the graffiti left on the wall stretching back hundreds of years, the well has been responsible for many cures. Even to this day, devotion to St. Winifred has remarkable tenacity and a statue of the saint sits beside the well and is always decorated with flowers and candles left by the pilgrims. The well and its infrastructure is maintained and taken care of by the Catholic Church. 
and the main pilgrimage date is in June, when over 2,000 pilgrims walk in procession down the hill and towards the well. This is followed by priests carrying a statue of St. Winifred and a relic containing what is said to be part of her finger bones. Mass is also celebrated in the well garden, and with this the bishop of the local diocese bless six sick pilgrims and with the relic. This is then followed by the pilgrims walking around the well, while some gather water in bottles to take home with them, and also they light candles to venerate the saint. Finally, the procession finishes with the bishop holding up the relic for each of the pilgrims to kiss. Back in the 1990s, a piece of wood was discovered in a closet at Holy Well, and it proved to be the last surviving fragment of an 8th century relic of St. Winifred. This makes St. Winifred perhaps the oldest of any Welsh saint. The survival of this relic into the 19th century was itself considered to be a miracle. The well itself, although Catholic in the present era, takes the visitor back to a time of pagan veneration. And walking around it myself, I could have been forgiven for believing that I was back in Roman Britain 2,000 years ago. What particularly impressed me about St. Winifred's well is that the stonework on the building itself has not been cleaned or polished and still retains an antiquated and timeless feel. Likewise, the graffiti left on the walls from pilgrims claiming to be cured, many of them from Ireland, is also rather moving. St. Winifred's well is a prime example of that ubiquitous crossover between pagan times and early Christianity, which is infused with a power that carries forth from the time of the Druids to the Christianity of the present. I was particularly impressed by the star-shaped pool at the centre of the main structure and the swirling waters contained there within. There was a sense of timelessness. The fact that the Catholic Church went through so much trouble to build such a structure around the well is testament to its power. Normally, Christians would be adverse to the idea of water coming up from hell, as this is how they would have seen it. However, there was also an element of lucrative business in curing pilgrims, travelling not only from all over Britain, but from overseas. Whoever St. Winifred really was, or what pagan archetype she was based upon, her power and her energy remains to this day, and the timeless nature of those healing, swirling waters leaves one with a very powerful impression.